will eat the bugs. Eating insects could help fight world hunger. From caterpillars and cockroaches to mealworm covered apples. You will live in the pot. We tend what we call pedestrians into the space. There's no privacy. As you see, there's no curtain, there's no wall. You will wear the mask. When I do not have to wear the mask on. You will get the vaccine. You will become the refugee. You will celebrate Pride Year. Children. You will watch the Hollywood movies. <laughs> you will celebrate diversity. <laughs> you will watch the pornography. You want some big fucking cock? Yeah. So, so, so this is where you live. What do you like about it? You will consume the product. Don't ask questions. Get excited for next product. You will not spread anti-Semitism. This was posted by a professor at Rutgers University on his Facebook page. There is absolutely no price to pay who openly expresses such violence. <laughs> you will fight white people. Look at the belly of the beast and we will gouge it! <laughs> you will put your kid on puberty blockers. Well, you're a boy, right? No. I'm a girl. My son started telling me that he had a girl's brain in a boy's body. All of his authority figures tell him he's a girl. You will send your daughter to Eurovie. Minilu! <laughs> you will have no privacy. Yes, you. You will own nothing. Now is the historical moment the time to shape the system. And you will be happy. As a young generation, like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, half of this cabinet, are actually young noble leaders of the world. Right. So we penetrate the cabinets. The change is not just happening. The change can be shaped by us. We have to prepare for a more angry world. How to prepare to take the necessary action to create a fairer world? I see the need for a great reset. So people assume we are just going back to the good old world which we had and everything will be normal again. This is, uh, let's say, fiction. It will not happen. There is only one way this pandemic is going to go. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. Pay insufficient attention to the frightening scenario of a comprehensive cyber attack, which would bring to a complete halt to the power supply, transportation, hospital services, our society as a whole. The COVID-19 crisis would be seen in this respect as a small disturbance in comparison to a major cyber attack. You've sold us out to globalism. Okay. You are not working for Canada. You are working for your globalist partners. I wonder how much they're paying you to betray Canada. What do we do with traitors in Canada, Mr. Trudeau? We used to hang them, hang them for treason. And you're doing that very same thing to us now. 
We know what you're doing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I listened to my colleague's speech. I had a constituent that wanted me to ask a question about outside interference to our democracy. Klaus Schwab is the head of the World Economic Forum, and he bragged how his subversive WWF World Economic Forum has, quoted, infiltrated governments around the world. He said that his organization had penetrated more than half of Canada's cabinet. And I was wondering, in the interest of transparency, could the member please name which cabinet ministers are on board with the WEF's agenda? My concern is the deputy. Uh, order, order, order. I, I know he was. I know the, uh, the member was in a, a really good, good question there, but the, the the audio is really, really bad, and the video is really, really bad as well. Um, and I and I and I apologize. I don't know if if the member. Okay, uh, let's let's uh, let's try again. The honourable the, the, the honourable member for Timmins James Bay. Mr. Speaker, that member was promoting open disinformation. That's not debate. We have to call out disinformation. Uh, we'll get into debate again. And so, no, I'm not going to be taking any uh, policy direction from Klaus Schwab or his, his ilk. But, and what I find offensive, look, the so-called Great Reset is not a conspiracy theory. It is a actual set of, propo of concrete proposals being advocated by some very influential people and including, apparently, by Prime Minister Trudeau, who clearly alluded to it, referred to it, quoted from it, the Schwab theory, uh, in a speech he gave to the United Nations a couple of months ago. So it's not a conspiracy theory to talk about that. Those are the folks advocating it. And I think it's perfectly legitimate for democratically elected leaders for me to say, heck no, we're not going to exploit or take, the, uh, take advantage of a crisis to... Uh, advance a political agenda. I liked about the second book is, is that it starts talking about values and the principles of the revolution. And I think that's key. You know, we share similar values, yeah, well, exactly. values on, on the world, which I think it's it's possible. One of them that we are pushing hard is uh, uh, decarbonization. Yeah. We're going to launch our commitment on decarbonization in February. That means we're going to 99% renewable and clean electricity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now the challenge is we're going to plug that matrix onto transportation to reduce mm -hmm. dramatically mm -hmm. the, the emissions and to reduce the usage of fossil fuels until mm -hmm. we don't use those anymore. I know you play also uh, very important role in preserving, let's say, your forests. You have a young population, you have a, a relatively well-educated population. You can use the fossil industrial revolution to create, um, let's say, fast-track growth for your country. My commitment will be to add value. It will be part of the Young Leaders yes, Initiative. Yes, this is Merkel, Tony Blair. Um, they were all, even uh, President Putin, they were all young global leaders before. Mm. So, um, if I take you, if I take Chancellor Kurz and the New Zealand mm. Prime Minister, the three youngest leaders of governments are here. Mm. So, I know you have many uh, beautiful things in your country, but it characterizes the diversity and at the same time everything goes up. Thank you. Thank you very much. We call it Mount Crystal. Mount Crystal. <laughs> Thank you for the books. They are really inspiring. The World Economic Forum welcomes the young global leaders. This year we selected 245 young global leaders from 65 countries with representation in every region uh, of the world. The collaboration, the innovation, and the entrepreneurship that you see active in the community really is, I think, making a mark on society. It's a wonderful community of innovators and uh, people who have a great devotion to change the world to be a better place for humanity. A group so diverse of uh, young people in leadership positions sharing a commitment to build a better society can really make a forceful and powerful uh, agent of change. I truly believe that um, we can inspire each other to really, really shape this global agenda. There are no challenges, there are also opportunities if we, if we use them right. 
The World Economic Forum welcomes the young global leaders. We have, uh, if, if I look at our stakeholders, we have business, uh, of course, um, as a very important audience, and we have politics, we have uh, uh, continuous um, uh, partnerships with many governments around the world, and of course we have NGOs, uh, we have trade unions, we have all those different parts. Media, of course. Media, of course, very, and very important um, experts and scientists and academia, because if we are looking at the future, I think we should look at new solutions, and the new solutions will be very much driven by technological uh, developments. And we even have, uh, you even have religious leaders, right? We have religious leaders, we have social entrepreneurs, very important social entrepreneurs.
eerste is de heer Klaus Schwab, oprichter en voorzitter van het World Economic Forum. En hij heeft ook een boek geschreven met als pakkende titel COVID-19, The Great Reset. En mijn vraag aan de demissionair minister-president is, hoe beoordeelt hij de inhoud van dit boek? De minister-president. Ja, ik ken het boek niet, voorzitter. Maar ik zou liever meiden willen adviseren om niet al te veel in al die conspiracy theorieën. Ik, ik kijk ze ook allemaal op YouTube. Dat is fascinerend hoe dan uitgelegd wordt dat 9-11 niet heeft plaatsgevonden of dat het allemaal anders zit. Ontzettend knap in elkaar gezet. Maar het is meestal wat het is, een conspiracy theorie. Wat we willen doen in Davos dit jaar in dit respect is to push the reset button. Nou, het verbaast mij dat de eerste vraag die ik aan de heer Rutte stel sinds ik beëdigd ben als Kamerlid direct maar wordt beantwoord. Ook. Dank u wel, maar het verbaast mij dat die eerste vraag direct wordt beantwoord met een leugen. Ik heb namelijk een brief in mijn hand die dateert van 26 november 2020. En dat is een brief van de heer Rutte aan de heer Klaus Schwab, waarin hij de heer Schwab bedankt voor het toezenden van zijn ja. boek. En dit noemt een hoopvolle analyse voor een betere toekomst. Zou de heer Rutte nog even kunnen graven in zijn geheugen? Het is nog geen half jaar geleden, dus ik weet niet hoe lang uw herinneringen actief blijven, maar waarschijnlijk is dit nog wel ergens op te graven. En mijn eerste vraag opnieuw te beantwoorden en nu eerlijk, alstublieft. Nou, het eerlijke antwoord is dat dat een, een, een nette brief is, waarin je uh, helaas niet alle boeken die je toegestuurd krijgt van kaft tot kaft kunt lezen, maar wel degene die je toestuurt een vriendelijke brief wil terugsturen. Nou, dan zegt de heer Rutte dus eigenlijk dat hij niet heeft gelogen tegen mij, maar tegen de heer Klaus Schwab. Ik, ik, ik was, ik maar laat ik dan hier direct alsnog de vraag stellen. De heer Klaus Schwab, die pleit in zijn boek voor het resetten van onze wereld, om onze nationale parlementaire democratie te vervangen door een globale technocratie. Hij pleit ervoor dat er een einde komt aan privébezit. En de heer Rutte is er kennelijk niet eens van bewust dat hij dit een hoopvolle boodschap voor een betere toekomst heeft genoemd. Hoe is het mogelijk dat de heer Rutte een waardeoordeel hecht aan een boek met een neocommunistische boodschap, terwijl hij dat boek niet eens gelezen heeft? Dank u wel. Shalom, brothers and sisters. I want to keep this video really short and to the point. You know about the World Economic Forum, one of the organizations that founded the event 201, which took place on 18th of October 2019, right before this whole coronavirus thing started. Now, this World Economic Forum is talking about the Great Reset, how this whole uh, world needs a reset where uh, our economy is going to be re-established. There's going to be a new system that I want to have, a new system. And know that the Bible is talking about that. The Bible is talking about one world leader and one world religion and a one world currency system where everybody is going to have to pay with the mark of the beast in the right hand or on their forehead. Pay, buy or sell. Without it, it will be impossible to buy or sell. Now, the Great Reset, this, this World Economic Forum is open about it, that there is a Great Reset coming, that I want this. But know this, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to show you the video at the end of this video, but I want you to see this, and this is what is really important. Vladimir Putin, he was connected to this World Economic Forum, I believe still is. But until, if you see this is a website from the World Economic Forum, but this one is opened in a, as you can see here, internet archive, archive way back machine. It's a web archive where you can browse websites and see them in the state they were on in the past. So on the, on the, on on certain datums, certain dates. So if you look up here on the right, it says February 27th, 2022. Vladimir Putin was still to be found on the World Economic Forum website. Notice this. If you go 
to today, you cannot find Vladimir Putin anymore on the World Economic Forum, which means that since today World Economic Forum deleted Putin, their connection with Putin on on the web, so you cannot connect them anymore. I truly believe, brothers and sisters and unbelievers watching this video, I truly believe that the governments, or the Bible calls it the kingdoms of this world, work together yeah, to establish one last kingdom that is going to rule over all the earth. One last kingdom before the true kingdom comes. The kingdom of Jesus, the kingdom of God, where the King Jesus is going to rule over this earth righteously. So this, this leaders of this world, this worldly kingdoms are trying to establish one last kingdom and they are doing it right now. They were doing it through this pandemic, through the regulations, so that all people would get used to um, having to have something to be able to buy or sell or to go to a store. Right. So for two years now, all the people of this earth are being brainwashed into having something on you, like a mask or a vaccination passport, something on you to be able to buy or sell. It's becoming more and more normal. Now, all of a the sudden, they take away all these regulations. And what do they do? What happens next? Russia invades Ukraine. So. We have this whole chaos going on from which they want to establish their new order, the new world order. The Bible is talking about these things. This is how far we are. It can be that World War III will break out. It can be. But at the end, their, their agenda is to, to bring in this new world order with a new leader, the Antichrist, which the whole world is going to go after after the beast after the antichrist after the system and my plea with you today if you are not a christian yet please take this seriously and do not bow your knee for the babylon for this world for this system bow your knee to the lord jesus christ because when he comes back you see what's happening in the world the bible is true when jesus comes back he comes to judge righteously and to make war be right with jesus be sure that you are on the right side. I'm going to show you now the video of the Great Reset. This is what they want. This is what they promote. The World Economic Forum, which, which had connections with Vladimir Putin. It's all a big deception. The Bible says in the last days, there will be deceptions. The Lord Jesus says, do not be deceived. These were first words of Jesus to his disciples in Matthew chapter 24. This is the video that World Economic Forum put on their own YouTube channel. this blesses you i hope that you make a choice if you don't believe in the lord jesus christ that you today bow your knee and give your life to jesus before it's too late shalom
American businesses are on alert after the Homeland Security Department warned Russia may launch cyber attacks targeting critical U.S. infrastructure and banking systems. Former Deputy Assistant Director of the FBI Cyber Division, Howard Marshall, joins me now with more on this. Howard, thanks for being here. How serious does the potential threat need to be for the Homeland Security Department to issue a warning like this? Yeah, good morning, Diane. Thank you for having me. Um, you know, obviously, I think what your viewers need to understand is while, you know, Russia and Ukraine are a long way away from the United States, uh, cyber attacks and cyber activity is really border agnostic. Uh, and for the DHS to come out and, and issue uh, guidance like this uh, at a heightened time, uh, you know, in a heightened alert status, uh, it, it's, an, it's an important thing that uh, organizations should be taking very seriously. Now, we know suspected Russian cyber attacks targeted Ukrainian government computer systems. So what would a possible cyber campaign look like against the U.S.? Sure. Well, I, I, you know, it's, it, we know a lot about uh, what the Russians are capable of doing. We've got more than two decades worth of history of tracking them and collecting intelligence. Uh, we've seen what their capabilities are. Uh, we know what they're, you know, we, we know what they've done in the past. And I think what your viewers need to understand is uh, we're dealing with a a, uh, a tremendous adversary. We know what they've done in the Ukraine. They've been able to, they successfully turned off the uh, electric grid there. They've launched uh, an attack, uh, not patch I don't know if your viewers are familiar with that one or not, but it went global uh, and had significant impacts, uh, even downrange into supply chains. Uh, went way past where its intended target was. So I, I think people need to understand that the adversary is, is significant and they need to remain alert. Now here in America, critical infrastructure like electrical grids, um, uh, even transportation, certain other aspects uh, are run uh, largely by the private sector. So does that make them more or less vulnerable? <laughs> You know, it's a great question, and it really depends on what the intent of the adversary is. Uh, you know, in terms of intelligence gathering, there are there are there is data that's being collected and stored in warehouse that's of significant importance to other nation states. Uh, and if their intent was to gather intelligence, certainly that would make that organization a a, a priority target. Uh, in another sense, you think about tactical targets in, in terms of launching a. a you know, in, in preparation for a kinetic attack, uh, you know, again, critical infrastructure you've mentioned, uh, but but also, uh, you know, beyond that, communications, transportation, uh, you know, biotech. You got to be thinking about the things that, uh, that that feed citizens, that keep us safe, uh, you know, water supplies, things of that nature. So, what should businesses be doing right now to protect themselves? Yeah, great question. We're, we're talking to them about a number of different things. First and foremost, they need to be thinking about an incident response plan. Uh, most businesses have them, uh, but a lot of times they go untested. So we would we are encouraging folks to quickly pull those plans out, dust them off, exercise them, make sure that that muscle memory is there. Uh, so if, if, God forbid, they are victimized, they have an idea of, of how to fight back and how to get back up on their feet. Um, we are also talking to them about making sure that they're updating uh, and patching constantly. Uh, lastly, we wanna make sure that they've got offsite uh, storage and backups uh, and that they're able to, again, if they're victimized, if they're able, uh, that they're able to get back into business as quickly as possible and, and serve the uh, consuming public. And Howard, that's what businesses themselves can do. Is there more that you think the government should be doing? I, I don't know about more. I, I do know that behind the scenes, things that people don't see every day, uh, there is a lot of information and intelligence sharing. You, you mentioned the DHS alert that, that went out. Uh, but, but beyond that, uh, the United States government has a significant connectivity to the tech industry. Uh, and, and what I think a lot of people need to understand is that there is a ton of data uh, that's of significance to the government and the government's mission, both in terms of protecting and, and possibly in terms of uh, offensive uh, capabilities. And, and again, heightened state of alert now, but, but those relationships have been developed over years. Uh, and in moments like these, uh, they're leaned on. So as, as long as that intelligence has continued to be shared, we're in great shape. All right. Former FBI Cyber Division Deputy Assistant Director Howard Marshall, we appreciate your time today, Howard. Thank you. This is Dabu 7. I feel something huge is about to happen.
You could say that a domino effect of events is already in motion. But I think a repercussive blow that the United States is going to feel in other countries as well is going to be dealt here in the offing. Russia, as of today, has become the most sanctioned country on the planet, surpassing Iran and others that are on the list in the blink of an eye with many businesses cutting off ties. And now Russia planning to make a huge move that they tested back in June and July, no later than March 11th in the coming days. They will move all their servers and domains over to this RussianZone.ru, every single thing that they've got. This is a huge move. Interesting that they've been sitting out in the Atlantic Ocean with their boats parked over the internet cables, doing drills. Another interesting note, one of the biggest warnings we've put out here in the past couple years is Cyber Polygon. The World Economic Forum announcing and talking about this, they took it off their website. Boy, if you ever were looking for a red flag, you just got one. It will be interesting to see if this catches enough attention to where they throw it back up or what. But many people going there now, getting this right here. Sorry, but we can't find what's been there for months. What we've done many live streams and videos on. Cyber Polygon. Gone. But it's on archive.today, like the Wayback Machine. Well, we've still got it for now in the proof, and I'm going to break this down in the next live stream where I can speak freely about it, because I can't even say certain words on some of these platforms out there. You people are tripping if you think you're going to get it all out here on this platform that you're hearing this from. No. DLive, Patriot TV, where I go live, I can speak freely with no censorship. I can break this whole thing down. Real deal. That's where the goods are. There's no other way around it. Okay? There's something huge that's about to happen. And I'm talking about it there. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern. When I go live, you'll find links below. Follow me on Twitter and Getter as well. And hit that subscribe button for more. I really hope y'all have a plan. Only been wanting about it for years. This message is sponsored by the World Economic Forum. Ask your local politician about it. Hello, Herr Schwab. Schöne Grüße aus Polen. Meine Nachricht ist The Bugs will eat you. Oh ja, I am penetrating this cabinet like I am penetrating the political cabinets around the world. It's okay, I know the drill. I'm penetrating this cabinet like I'm penetrating Kurva. <clears throat>